Uh, how do you set boundaries in relationships? One, one thing you'll discover is that people who do not have boundaries in their life have a very difficult time with people who do have boundaries in their life. And so if you tell a guy, hey, in our relationship, uh, just so you know, right out the bat, I'm not willing to do X, Y, and Z, and, and here's why. And when it comes to chastity, you will always get one of three reactions, okay? Reaction number one is he's a jerk about it. Like, what? You won't do that stuff with me? What do you like, some other guy? Are you some prude? Like, what's wrong with you? And he might try guilt. He might try anger. He might try pettiness or resentment or distance. Whatever he's trying is to emotionally manipulate you to cave in. If that's his reaction, obviously get out. This is the wrong type of guy. Reaction number two is he acts like he's okay with it, but two weeks later, it's back to the same old questioning. Well, can we at least do this? Can we at least do that? If that's his reaction, then girls, get out. Because look, you can train a dog how to balance a bone on its nose, right? But as soon as you give it the command, it's going to devour that thing. If that's the guy's attitude towards your purity, that he's respecting you because that's what you want to do, you don't want a guy who's just going to wait for you. You want a guy who will actually wait with you. Because guess what? Girls have temptations too. And if it's your job to be the chastity cop, then what happens when you feel tempted? Both of you are always going to fall. And so you want a guy who doesn't just respect your morality. You want a guy who shares your morality. And that's going to call you on to be a better version of who God wants you to be. And so when it comes to setting those boundaries, first you need to know what they are yourself, right? And then you need to have the courage to communicate those to a guy. Ideally, you want to communicate these to the guys before you start dating them. Because you want to know, before you even date a guy, are we in agreement on this? Because if you're not in agreement, and you're two or three months into the relationship, then it becomes really awkward, like, oh, how do I mention this to him? That's the whole purpose of friendship, to bring these things up beforehand. But you need boundaries in a dating relationship. It's like, it's be, it's not because like sex is bad or dirty. It's like, no, like, for example, I, I went on the uh, Pacific Coast Highway Drive a while back with my kids. We rented a Jeep and went down the, the coast to California. And you drive down a place called Big Sur, which is hundreds of mile, or hundreds of feet tall cliff with a road on top of it. And down at the bottom is these massive waves of the Pacific Ocean crashing up against the rocks. And they have a guardrail, obviously, along the freeway. And it's not there because like the ocean is bad. It's just because your lives are so good. And if you just get one wheel off the edge, the whole family can be gone. And so it's the same thing with the gift of our human sexuality. The boundaries you set up around that relationship are to preserve it. It's to allow it to grow. It's not because God doesn't want us to have fun. It's because there are certain forms of sexual affection that belong only in marriage. That is the proper confine of that. It's like if you think of a goldfish in a bowl of water, the, the bowl is there. It might feel confining, but if you were to shatter that bowl, the goldfish would die. And in the same respect, when it comes to our sexuality, the proper place for that is the sacrament of marriage. So what I would say the boundary should be is that sexual arousal and even sexually arousing, passionate kissing stuff belongs in marriage. And some girls are like, but I don't know. I mean, I can make out with a guy and I'm totally fine just making out. I remember one girl told me, she said, yeah, I told my boyfriend that all we're going to do is make out. We're not going to go any further. And he said, okay, that's fine with me. But then after like a month or two of this, he said to her, don't you ever just kind of get bored? And she said, well, no, I don't. He said, well, I do. Because every time we do that, my body is getting so revved up to want to go further and further, but then we have to slam on the brakes every time. And so she didn't realize that the curve of sexual arousal in a man versus a girl tends to be very differently. For a woman, it tends to be more gradual, like an iron, right? You plug an iron into the wall, it's not that hot, wait a little while, it's warmer, wait a while, it gets extremely hot, but it takes time. With a guy's curve of sexual arousal, it doesn't work like an iron. It works more like a light bulb, okay? You just flip the switch, it's on. And so you got to be careful when it comes to cuddling with guys and these hot, passionate makeout sessions. His brain is always quite a bit further from where his body is. And so what I've found in dating girls, the more pure you are, the easier it is to be pure. The more you kind of sit on the fence and be like, I won't do that, but we'll still do this, it becomes really hard to stay pure because you're teasing yourself with these desires that can be only satisfied within marriage. And so I would say when it comes to this guy, 
be frank with your conversation with him. Find out early on where he's at. Because I know a girl who went on a date at Louisiana State University and she came home crying. And her mom said to her, what happened? And she says, look, I went on a date with that guy. And as soon as we got in the car, he started making these little perverted jokes of what he wanted to do with me. And I told him, no, we practice chastity. And he said, that's okay. There's lots of other stuff we can do, meaning everything but intercourse. And she said, I'm not sure you understand. I respect my body, my future husband. And he looked at her and he said, so you mean I'm not going to get anything tonight? She said, nope, you're not. And he said, okay. He turned the car around, drove her home, dumped her off, and, she, and he left. And she has never seen him again. And you know what I say? Thank God. Because she could have given that to him for six months, wondering, does he love me? Is he in it for the right reasons? Psh, uh-uh. Date number one. These are my morals. If you don't respect them, go home. And that's exactly what he did. And so that's one of the beauties of chastity is it will bring to the surface a man's intentions. Because girls, look, you know, talk is so cheap. Any guy can say, oh, girl, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever met, and I can totally see myself with you forever, and if you don't want to do sexual things, I'm okay with that. Okay, great. Anybody can say that, but is he capable of bringing you to heaven? And if he's not, then don't waste your time with this guy. And so have that conversation frankly and have it early on, and don't be afraid of your morals. Don't be afraid of your standards. You know, if you have to lower your morals to find love, it's not love that you're finding. And even if you've made mistakes in the past, don't think that you're now disqualified from love. Because some girls like, well, what's the point of hoping in love? Because even if there are good guys out there, they wouldn't want a girl like me because of what I did in the past. Girls, look, if any good guy judges you by your past, he's not that good of a guy. Hold out for a guy who can see your future, not one who's just gonna always hold your past over your head. Yeah, look, your past, maybe it's messy, but your whole future is spotless. Hold out for the guy that's going to keep it spotless.